Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing great. So in today's video, we will learn about a new HTTP method that is a put method. Okay. So before this release, we had two methods, which was which were get and post method. Now we have uh, three new methods, which are put, patch, and delete. In today's video, we will cover the put method, and of course, we will cover the patch and delete method in the upcoming videos as well. Okay. So now, without any further ado, let's dive straight into our org and start creating our flow. Okay. Uh, I have taken a screen flow here, but before our flow, we have to do some configuration for the HTTP callout, which is we have to create a name credential, an external credential, and a permission set for the user who will use this flow and the HTTP callout methods. Okay, so let's just go to name credential. This one I have already created uh, when I was testing the example. Uh, now let's go to external credentials first and create a new one. Let's call it HTTP callout external credential. Okay. And the name will be same without any spaces. Authentication will be custom. So for this example, first we have to use the post method to post the data to the server. And I will not explain it in detail. Because I have a separate video for that already in which I'm explaining it very deeply that how you can use the post method. You can uh, check that out and you can learn how you can use the HTTP post method. Otherwise, if you know it, that's very, very good. Uh, then we have created the external credential. Now we will create a principle for the external credential. So we could map the permission set to the principle. Uh, let's name it HTTP principle. Okay. And we will click on save. So the external credential is done. Now we will go to permission set and create a new permission set for the user who will use this uh, flow. So we will create a new permission set and let's name it HTTP callout P set permission set and click on done. Now we have to do two things. First, we will add this permission set with the external credential principle that we have created. Uh, for that, we will go to the external credential principle access. And here we will click on edit. When we click on edit, we will get the principle that we have created. Uh, this one. And let's click on save. Now we have added the principle to the permission set. Now we want to assign the permission set to the user. So I will add this to my user. And let's click on done, assign. And let's click on done again. Now we will go to name credentials and we will create a new name credential for the external credential. Okay, let's click on new. HTTP name credential and the name will be same without the spaces okay now it is asking for the url so for today's example and for the previous examples as well i have used this website this is a open restful api website for everyone to use for examples okay uh, i will use this and for the post method i will use this okay Here you can see we have all the available methods of http callouts when you click on post you get this url for the post method now we will copy this url as the name credential url here it is and now for external credential we will choose our external credential we don't want any header and that is it it looks good let's click on save so now our main configurations are done, which are name credential, external credential and permission set. Now let's go back to our flow and let's create a flow to uh, first use the post method and then eventually use the put method. OK, so what we will do is we will take an action element. And we will click on create HTTP callout. Now here first we will create the external service. Let's name it post service and in the name credential we will choose our name credential which is this one and once you choose the name credential you can see you have the url that you have added in the credential let's click on next okay let's remove the spaces 
and click on next. Now we will configure the invocable action. So let's name it HTTP post action. And in the method, we will choose the post method. Okay. Now it asks for the URL path. So basically if your URL, that means this URL has a path, which it does. So you will just copy this path and with the forward slash, you will add the path here. Okay. If your URL does not have a path, you don't have to add it here. If it has, then you have to add it here. Okay. Uh, then it asks for query parameters. We do not have any. Now it asks for sample request and sample response. Okay. So for sample request and response, you have the request and response in this website as well. Let's just copy this request and paste it here and review it. It will just show you the data structure with all the appropriate data types. Now we will click on done. And for sample response, we will copy this response and paste it here. Okay. And we will review it. Uh, once you will just check the request and response, you will see that uh, in the response, you have ID as well. This is the ID that we are going to use in our put method. Okay. That is why we are using post before put method. Uh, this is the data structure. Let's click on done. Now let's click on save. Uh, one second. Add a unique external service name. What does that mean? Is it about this name or? Uh, Let's just name it something different and try. Okay, it is done. I don't know what was that added about, but it is resolved. Okay, now we are uh, adding the details about our action element. Uh, let's call it HTTP post action element. Okay, and for external service, we have this. For method, we have post. Everything looks great. Okay. Now we have to set the body. So before this uh, release, the winter 24 release, we have to create a new variable, which was not Apex defined. We have to choose the data type and we have to choose the Apex class as well. But here, as you can see, when I click on the new resource button, the data type is already declared, already chosen, and the Apex class is already selected as well. I just have to add the name. So that is a great thing because in my previous example, there were many comments that uh, they are confused about the Apex class, like which class to choose from. Uh, there were so many classes for external service. So I think this is a great update uh, for everyone to use. Now let's name it um, post action web. Okay. And let's click on done. So basically we don't have to do anything about the body. And let's click on done. Now we have added the post method, but to post the values uh, to the server, we have to assign the values in our variable that we have created, right? So for that, we will take an assignment element. Assign values to post where. And now what we will do is, this is our Apex defined post variable. In this, we have the uh, attributes and values that we have here, name, data, year, price, and model, etc. So we will add the values in this for name. Let's say we add this. I'm just copy pasting the data. So it saves the time. Data dot model. And this is the model. Let's add everything really quickly. price and the year it was 2019 i'm adding it as it is and let's click on done <clears throat> so now what we have done is we have created an apex defined variable for the external service we have assigned values to the apex defined variable and now we have used the post method to send the data to the server okay let's just save this flow and see if it is working fine Let's debug it.
and run it. Okay, so it says all done and here if you will see the interview started, uh, we have assigned the values in the uh, Apex defined variable and then we have called the post method and we have post all the values here and here we get the output as well. In the output, I told you we will get the ID and we have an ID here as well, okay? If you will uh, compare this output to this output, you will find it uh, same. Okay, so now this was the example for the post method that I have created earlier as well. Now, this video is focused on the put method. So let's talk about that now. So for simply understanding the put method, let's go here and let's click on the put. Okay, here you can read that it says it updates the object. That is what it does. With put method, you can update the data in the object. Okay, so put methods, uh, request and responses here. And also you can see for the uh, put method URL, we have this seven. So this seven is basically the ID that we got from the post method, okay? So for updating any uh, objects record, uh, if we use DML operations as well, what we do is we write update this to this field where ID equals to this, okay? So for that updating uh, the data, we need the ID, right? So that is the ID and that is the whole reason that we have used the post method so that we could get the ID in the response, okay? So with put method, basically we can update the data, we can update the object. Let's go here. Let's take another action for the put method. Create HTTP callout and we will name it HTTP put external service okay for the name credential of course we will use the same name credential you don't have to create every time a new name credential until your url is same okay invocable action will be http put action and for method we will choose put method now here it asks again if we have any url path Let's go to our uh, website and see if we have a path. Yes, we have. We have objects and then we have ID as well. So let's copy it here and let's paste it here. But now we cannot add the ID hard coded, right? So what we will do is in the curly braces, we will add a variable name that can be anything that doesn't have to be ID. We can add it as post ID as well. You can add any name that is just a variable name which will define that it will contain the ID of the uh, response. Okay, so now we don't have the parameter keys, so we will skip that. And once I added the ID, like the post ID, it asks that what data type the ID is. So it is a string data type. And then uh, it asks the same question, which is sample request and sample response. Let's just copy the request and response from here very quickly and paste it here. We can review it. The data structure is ready. Let's copy the response as well and paste it. Done. This is done. This looks good. Uh, now let's just name our action element, which will be HTTP put action element okay and here uh, the external service is same but the HTTP method is changed which is put now we have a URL path in which you can see we have our post ID variable so now because this is the variable we have to add values to it as well and what will be the value the value will not be hard coded uh, instead it will be the post methods response ID okay let's go here this is the output from post action. Click here and you will get the ID, which is a text field. Okay, let's go here. This is done. And for the request body, again, we will just create an Apex defined variable. We just have to basically add the API name. Other than that, everything is done from their side. Um, action put body, let's name it. Action put body where is correct and let's click on done now again we have added the put action but now we have to assign values to the action body where that we have created right so we will take an assignment element again and assign values to action put body variable okay so here as well we will 
just add the values you can copy paste the values from here you can just add values as you want to but just make sure that the uh, data type of the value uh, that is here uh, and the value that you are adding is the same we don't have to actually add apple macbook pro you can add anything you can add apple iphone for example and now let's go for this let's add 15 uh for model yes it is string let's add 15 pro max and size we will add 1 db what else we have now we have color as well did you notice that in this uh we are changing the color that is not here in the post in post we don't have any color attribute but in put with put uh, update we are adding the color to the data so we will add the color to let's say white and let's go there again so let's say the price is one lakh bucks and after that we have one more which is year so we will add 2023 here okay and you will click on done now we have assigned the values in the put body where and then we have assigned the put body where in the http put uh, method body okay uh, let's just save it and let's debug to check if that is working as expected run and here it says all done let's go to the start interview started we have assigned values in the post variable then we have called the post method here's the result we got the id and then we have assigned values in the put body where uh, these are the values that we have assigned here and now the put body where uh, http callout occurs and in the output we have the output uh, as you can see here the name and everything is uh, updated and also we have a new attribute here which is color so with put method you can uh, update your object you can update your data but for updating remember you will need an id that's why i have used the post method uh, to get the id first from the response and then i have used put method to just uh, update the data to just update the object okay so that is it that was today's example that was today's flow in the next video we will use the patch method and we will use the delete method as well i hope you like this video i hope you found this useful and you will uh, try it in your real time scenarios let me know in the comment section below how did you like the video i'll see you super soon in the next video till then bye bye take care and keep learning